So another question I get is, is it possible to increase strength using a carnivore diet on a deficit? Well, not even like using the carnivore diet, uh, which I did. Uh, just basically, if you are in a deficit, it's going to be a lot harder to gain strength. I'm not telling you it's impossible. It's easier to keep gaining strength while you are in a deficit than gaining muscle while you're in a deficit, which is very hard unless you are just retraining and regaining lost muscle if you're a beginner or if you're severely obese. Dramatically, an like overweight individual who carries lots of fat can actually build muscle while getting leaner because of the amount of reserve energy they have. But, but most people, if they are dieting down and being in the caloric deficit, it's going to be hard to add a significant amount of muscle. And that's why I don't really believe in recomposition, meaning gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. Yeah, it's technically possible, but it's excruciatingly slow and requires lots of precision. It's much smarter to devote a period of training to increase muscle mass and a period to decrease body fat, especially considering that adding muscle is a lot more difficult than losing fat. So if you're trying to lose fat at the same time as building muscle, you just made building muscle a lot harder, a lot harder. Now, let's get back to the question. Can you get stronger on a carnivore diet while being in a deficit? I'm going to just start with caloric deficit. Where does strength come from? There are three main categories of elements that will allow you to increase strength. The first one will be muscle mass. A bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. So if you gain muscle, you increase your potential to gain strength. It might not directly lead to strength gains because the nervous system needs to learn to use that muscle. But strictly speaking, all things being equal, a bigger muscle will be a stronger muscle. Uh, the second factor would be the efficiency or strength of the nervous system. So basically, I'm going to use this analogy, right? The muscles you have is the factory. The bigger the factory with, with more employees, the more you can produce, okay? That's in theory. But let's say that only half the employees show up for work. You might have a great potential, but you will not produce up to the level of your potential because only half of the employees work. That's muscle fiber recruitment. If you don't recruit as many fibers, especially the fast switch fibers, you're just not going to build as much muscle or get as much, uh, produce as much strength. Now, if the employees show up for work, but they just don't work hard, then you, once again, won't live up to the potential of your factory. That's the firing rate of the muscle fibers. So the fast switch fibers, once they're recruited, you can increase the amount of force they're producing by increasing how fast they're twitching, right? So if you have a low firing rate, you won't have maximum strength. Then the employees show up for work, they work hard, but the employees within a station don't work well together. So again, you're not gonna live up to the, the, your full potential. That's intramuscular coordination, another neurological element. How well are the muscle fibers within the muscle working together to make that muscle as strong as possible? Now, what if the employees show up, they work hard, they work well together in their unit, but they are not well coordinated with the other units. So maybe you're producing lots of tires, but the frame of the car is not ready yet. You won't produce as much as you should. That's intermuscular coordination, coordination between the various muscles involved in the lift. That's also a neurological thing, how well they work together, how, how coordinated they are. Now, what if the employees show up, they work hard, they work well together in the station, all stations work well together, but the leader is very conservative because he's afraid that employees will get injured and the company will have to pay severance pays or something like that or, or injury pay. So he will force the employees to slow down. Again, you won't live up to full potential. That are That's the protective mechanism that your body has, like the Golgi tendon organs that will limit how much force your muscles can produce. All of these are neurological factors. So you might have a big factory, but you also need a nervous system. These are the first two. The third one would be technical efficiency. The more efficient you are in your technique, the more weight you can lift on that movement. That doesn't mean you're stronger. It means that you can apply your strength better in that movement. So when it comes to being a caloric deficit, it's very hard to improve the muscle component of getting strong because you're not going to be building a lot of muscle on a caloric deficit. You might have a little bit, but not enough to make a difference in strength. However, the neurological factors are not calories dependent. So these can be improved. The technique can also be improved. So if you want to get stronger while you are in a deficit, you need to focus on training methods that emphasize mostly the nervous system. So we're talking something like strength skill. Strength skill is using a sub-maximal weight, let's say 80-85%, for sub-maximal reps, three to five reps, 
always leaving like three reps in the tank and doing that lift maybe five sets three times a week. So it's just making your nervous system efficient at doing that lift and recruiting the motor units involved in the muscle and making them work well together. And that's, that's strength skill work. If you type strength skill on T Nation, you're going to find several articles I wrote on the topic. On the other end of the spectrum, supramaximal partials could also be used like doing uh, top half squat, top half bench press from pins, stuff like that. 90 degrees pull-ups will allow you to use more weight than you normally would. Yeah, it doesn't have a direct strengthening effect on a full range of motion, but it has a strong impact on central nervous system and the protective mechanism. That could also be used. Now, you obviously don't want to lose muscle mass. Even though it's going to be hard to build muscle, you still want to maintain your muscle mass. So you still need hypertrophy work in there. The point is that, yeah, it's possible to increase strength in a deficit, but it's going to be much slower. Okay. One thing you'll find is that when you're dieting down, some lifts will stay the same. Some lifts will go up. Some lifts will go down. Okay. Typically speaking, small movements, like more targeted exercises, isolation, quote unquote, movements uh, will either stay the same or maybe even increase. But you look at the big compound movements, some like a deadlift is likely going to stay the same, maybe increase a bit because it gives you better leverage by keeping the bar closer to you if you're leaner. But things like the overhead press, the bench press and the squat will go down. Pull ups will go up, obviously, because you're lighter, but pulling strength is not affected by body weight much. But pressing strength is. The reason for that is called passive stability. The more stable the body feels, the more safe it feels. The safer it feels, the more it allows you to display the strength you have. If you feel unstable, the body will kick in the protective mechanisms a lot sooner, preventing you from producing strength. Now, what is passive stability? You have passive and active stability. Active stability would be the muscles around the joint contracting to stabilize that joint. So, for example, in pressing movement, the rotator cuff muscles, the lats, the rhomboids, the traps can all contract to stabilize the shoulder joints while you're pressing. Passive stability is all the tissue around a joint that's creating pressure on that joint. The more pressure you have, the more stability you create. So when you are losing weight, you want a fat loss on a deficit, that pressure will go down. Why? Because you're losing intramuscular glycogen, you're losing fat, you're losing extracellular water. All of that makes less tissue, less stuff around the joint, decreasing passive stability. You have less compression because there's less tissue there. You'll find that as you lose weight, you, you actually increase mobility quite a bit. But being more mobile typically decreases stability, at least passive stability. So that's why, for example, and that's super typical of a fat loss phase, your tricep extension or your dumbbell extension, your, your pec deck or, or fly or whatever, and your lateral raises or front raises will be just as strong, if not stronger. And you go on a bench press, it's down by 30 pounds. That's because of a decrease in stability. What can you do about that? Well, the first thing you do you can do that before your you, you dieting phase. If you do that during your dieting phase, it's too late. You need to create the capacity to increase active stability so that in the future, once you have a drop in passive stability, you can compensate by more active stability. That's done by using heavy weights with slow eccentrics, including pauses during the lift, like you're bench pressing, you're stopping midway, then you, you're finishing your movement. It's done by the hanging band technique, and you throw that in in your workout, and you do that for several months that will create a more stable joint. So even if you're losing tissue, the muscle that creates active stability will be good enough and strong enough to compensate for any drop in that. For example, Tom Shepard, uh, who works for me and also writes for T Nation, uh, Tom Shepard's a power lifter. I remember at one point he was 120 kilos, uh, so like 275 pounds or 265 pounds, and he was bench pressing 200 kilos, so that, that's 440 pounds. Uh, he dropped down to 191 pounds, and he was still able to bench press the same. At least, he was, in fact, he was bench pressing two kilos more. He was bench pressing like 450. Uh, the reason is that for the all the whole prep period, we always have one day where we emphasize the eccentric, one day when we emphasize statodynamic, and he also does a lot of hanging band work. So once he got the drop in body fat, didn't matter because he was so stable that he didn't lose strength. Now, if you don't have time to do that, what you can do, and I'm going to sound like an heretic here, you can always switch to machine variations while doing your fat loss phase. Unless you're a power lifter. When we're talking about strength, we're talking about muscle strength, the strength of your muscle, the capacity of your muscles to produce tension. Not being strong in a bench press or being strong in a back squat. See, there's a difference between having strong muscles and being able to display that strength in a movement. That's a skill. 
And even if you lose it because you're not practicing it, it will take two or three weeks to get it back, provided that your muscle strength is up. So there's nothing wrong, for example, if you're in a deficit for six weeks, you know what? Instead of doing bench press, I'm going to be doing chest press machine. I'm going to be doing mid machine bench press. You know what? That's fine. I'm not going to be doing squats. I'm going to be doing ax squats. Deadlift, you can keep it in because it's not affected by weight loss because the hip joint is so stable. That will allow you to actually keep increasing your strength the strength of your muscles because the machine stabilizes the weight for you. So there is less of a need for you to be stable. So even if you're losing that passive stability, it doesn't matter because the machine stabilizes the weights for you. So you can keep pushing really hard, lifting heavy weights, and you can gradually increase the weight that way. Well, I'm dieting right now. My training is mostly machines, and I'm able to add weight on a machine from week to week. So if I was doing that on a free weight barbell bench press or squat, it wouldn't work. It, I tried it. It doesn't work, at least not for more than two weeks, okay, especially as you're getting leaner. So, of course, yeah, if you stop doing bench press in favor of a, a machine bench press or a spin machine bench press, yeah, once you get back to bench press, it's going to feel weird. And, yeah, for two or three weeks, it feels like you can't bench anymore. But you know what? The muscle strength is there. Your muscle strength is likely higher than it was before. So just get back in a groove. It will take you two or three weeks to get back in a groove of the bench press, and now you can apply the newfound strength. So that would be my recommendation. Unless you are a powerlifter and you need to keep sharp on a competition lift pretty much year round, you know what? Switch to machines, switch to stable movement and keep pushing your strength up on these movements because there's less need for stabilization. So you will not be as impacted by the weight loss. Because when you think about it, if you're doing things right, you should not be losing muscle when you're dieting down. So your strength should not go down. Fat doesn't lift weight. Muscle moves weight. The reason why you lose strength on some movements when you are dieting down is because of drop in stability. So just switch to more stable exercises. It won't kill you. I mean, you'll get, you'll get your bench press back in three weeks. You're probably going to be stronger than it was before. All right. The carnivore diet or low carbs diet are actually worse than regular diet when it comes to what I just mentioned. Why? Well, take a guess. Okay. Uh, what creates passive stability? It's stuff around a joint. So in intramuscular glycogen, so you're blowing up that muscle. So if you if you blow up the muscle, it will create compression around that joint. A good example for that, I was training John Schlecht at uh, Biotest headquarters. Now, John Schlecht was an NFL lineman. Then he was a bodybuilder. And he's a huge guy, huge, like, like 6'2", 295 lean. The amount of muscle that guy had on his body was crazy. Well, if you know gymnastics or rings work, he, he was able to do a back lever. Back lever is when you're just basically hanging with your arms behind your back and you hang the, 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 the rings and your body is parallel to the floor facing down. Now, he was able to do that not because he was good at gymnastics, but his body was so tight because of all the muscle that is, he just literally got stuck in that position and it was super stable because that's only where your, his body could go. The limit of his, his movement actually made him stable. So the more muscle you have, the more stable a joint is. Now, if you are depleting muscle glycogen, which will happen on a low-carbs diet, regardless of what people say, especially on a carnivore diet. If you go on a low-carb carnivore diet, which is zero carbs, you will store less muscle glycogen. So you are deflating those muscles a bit, so that will create less pressure on the joint. It also is typically a diet that decreases water retention to the minimum. So by decreasing water retention, you also reduce stuff around the joint. So again, that will be just like any other diet on a deficit, but magnified. So you have a much more important a decrease in, in passive stability. So yeah, you can, uh, but typically, I mean, my strategy is either get super stable before or switch to stable movement during, but try to increase strength. If you don't lose muscle, you'll be able to add weight or get stronger on a movement, provided that you don't require it to be stable. All right, guys, that's the hour. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Those who watched it in replay, well, you know what you missed. If, there, if you feel that there's a better time frame for me to hold these Q&As, you can always send a suggestion to us on my forum or send feedback to T Nation. So hopefully you enjoyed it and spread the word. So I hope to see you at the next event. Stay tuned. We're going to post about it. Thank you, guys. If you enjoyed this information, hit that like button to let us know. Plus, if you never want to miss another T Nation video again, hit subscribe and that little notification bell right next to it.